my mom probably screaming. She see this, she gonna be screaming. Man, man, I'm so afraid of height. They would be looking this close. Okay, that's enough. First of all, this is something that I need everyone to understand. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone in uh, youth normality. Uh, I, I come from a place of very strict. I, I'm a very militant person. And what I mean by that is that I mean by like, I really don't, I really don't take well to people telling me stuff or, or trying to teach me anything. And, and, and to make a long story short, uh, I can contribute directly. Listen to what I'm about to say to you. This is how important this is right now. I can attribute directly 90 to 80% of every problem that led to some type of neglect of my own success to the fact that I did not understand or my perception was that I needed to be coached. Let that sit in. Notice I'm using words for what they mean, not what they mean to me. So if it's okay for you to leave in a comment or email me directly and if you don't understand the concept behind any of the things that I'm using, uh, I advise you to ask questions. I beg of you to ask questions. People who I'm around, people who are in successful positions, they don't like when a person doesn't ask questions. So I, I would love for you to ask questions if you don't like or understand something. But if God has blessed you or the God of your understanding has blessed you to the point where you understand what I'm saying, then mashallah, that's perfect. That's great, right? But I'll go back to what I'm saying so we don't lose the power in what I said. I can contribute directly 90 to 80% of all of my problems that led directly to a deficiency in my success to the point or to my perception that I did not need a coach. Now, let's look at the word perception, right? And understand that perception is not truth, but if you are expecting people to separate the difference between perception and truth, you might as well talk your girlfriend into believing that you're going to Jamaica with one of your girlfriends and there's nothing sexual going to happen. There's nothing, you know, romantic about it. Y'all just two homies going to Jamaica together for four nights and three days. <laughs> you got better luck trying to <laughs> get your girl to understand that or your boy or your dude or your fiance or your husband to to understand that she got to stay home or he got to stay home but you on Jamaica with one of your close friends that are the opposite sex because and, and for multiple nights and it's just not going to happen because we live in a world that perception is truth Everywhere you go, you will be confronted by what someone perceives reality to be. And the fact is that what someone perceives reality to be does not equal reality. I have gained my whole life on speaking the truth or at least trying to speak the truth to a point where when I talk to people, it, it leaves a, it leaves a, a, a taste in their mouth and I'm, I'm thankful for the good tastes the, the sweet tastes that it leaves and, I, and I'm also thankful for the bitter tastes that it leaves because when when I leave that person regardless whether they hate me or love me remembers me because of the truth being ignored in such a capacity that when you hear someone speak it they stand out so you have to understand, like, that's why my nickname in, in North Philadelphia, everywhere, is True That. Everyone calls me True That. Because, you know, I used to say stuff, and they'd be like, damn, man, it's true. And before you know it, then it was like on a basketball court, I was the truth. So before you know it, my nickname was True That. And it stuck with me for years and years and years and years and years and years. And... That was a perception of my life 
to be truthful. It, but then through perception, I learned that the truth can be exalting. It can be uh, arrogant. The truth can be all of the things that lies are. And if talked or presented to the right person, the truth can be offensive. So I learned that, you know, truth is supposed to be submissive to perception in some cases. And once I learned that, I realized that, okay, people don't want to be around someone who constantly is telling the truth because the truth isn't always pretty. It isn't always enlightening. And it's sometimes it's damaging, it's corrupt, and, 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 it, and it has a mirror, and no one wants to look at a mirror at 4 o'clock in the morning after they just woke up and they realized that they've been partying all the last day and their eyes is puffy and they ain't enough sleep. Like, no one wants to see that. So they would rather you wait to go in the bathroom and let them go in the bathroom and freshen up and brighten their face up and all that. They, and then they'll come out and say, it's okay for you to put the mirror in my face now because they already know what their reflection is. What am I saying? What does all of this coincide? What does all this coexist with each other for? It all coexists with each other and it coincides because you have to realize that if you are not aware of perception, you will be caught up by someone's perception and the truth would invade you. <laughs> I'll say it again. If you are not careful or if you are not knowledgeable about perceptions, you would allow someone's perception to consume you and take you clear out of reality. And you'll be caught up in that person's perception. So you have to realize that when you start to try to get yourself together, when you try to 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 go on the right path, when, when you're going through stuff in your life, and you, you will find that if you're a person like me, when, when I was your age, I, I used to hate the people who coached. Beautiful how it all comes together. I, my perception was I was naturally talented enough. I was God-given ability enough to not need a coach. So what is, what is they there to tell me how my jump shot is? And I've been shooting my jump shot ever since I've been shooting it. But it wasn't until I got a little bit higher and, you know, I can recall a time when I walked inside of a gym and it was 5,000 people there. And it was me and e, it was me and Omar Logan. And then it was Kobe Bryant. And it was E. Hood. And it was, uh, you know, it was Bunnies, Mr. Bunny Man. And, and, and E. Had Hobson. We walked inside the gym in McGonagall Hall and it was the Sunny Hill game. It was the championship. And, you know, I remember the perception of me being great was confronted with greatness. And I realized that day that not only did I need a coach, but I wasn't as gifted as I perceived. I was talented, but I wasn't as gifted. Not saying that I wasn't gifted, because I was. I mean, after all, I was in ninth grade. He was like 11th. But the fact that uh, that was the first time that I was confronted by people who was coached. It was the first time I was in, in, in introduced to people who, you know, even though they might have not had their jump shot, they might have had their natural jump shot and it worked, was told to keep their elbow in tighter and, you know, follow through and all of these things that you learn from being coached that perceives or goes outside of your own understanding that you figure out this has actually made me better. Yes, the practices was hard. Yes, you don't like somebody screaming at you. You don't like somebody hollering at you. But when you played the game and you scored that extra 10 points or you got them extra 10 rebounds, you realized that being coached was the greatest thing that could have happened to you. So I, I tell y'all that 
you know, Molly, I tell y'all that you have to understand that the same way in that game of basketball, you have the game of life and you may be naturally inclined to survive. You may have a nick to make money. You might do this, you might do that, but if you look at the circumstances of your life and realize what the reality of it, your life is and not the perception of your life, not what your girlfriends tell you or your homies tell you because they need to borrow $5. I'm talking about the reality of what your life is. If Once you look at those things, then you will understand that if you allow yourself to be coached, you can get the job with the extra pay and everyone else is working here on ground level and you up here. You can get you can go from the street to taking that same mentality and that same drive and the dedication that you have for the block and you can incorporate it in your own business. You can be just as savvy, just as sexy, just as all of that and use your beauty for some type of thing other than attracting someone who doesn't love anything but your body. If you would allow yourself to be coached. Uh, like always. Uh, sorry for the interruption. There, there can never be. I need to make sure that I'm staying consistent with everything I do. And someone asked me uh, about my saying when I stopped. And me studying people, everyone has something that they said at the end of their show. Russell Simmons with the you know, uh, David Lindemann, a whole lot of people had stuff they said at the end of the show. And, and yes, I did make it up, so I almost forgot, but mm, I caught myself. I'm in a great mood today. Uh, you know, I want you to know that I love you. And I don't say any of that. I don't say that so I can get any type of beneficial gain or anything behind it. I say that I love you because I'm a person of love, and that's just what we do. Remember also that you can have a great day on purpose, not because you got paid today or you got that woman or that man in your dreams, simply because you woke up, because understanding the blessing in that, you'll realize that there's a lot of dead people who will love to take your place. Last but not least, understand that if you are miserable, you are a participant in your misery because the same thing that's making you miserable, you can remove it out of your life and choose not to be miserable anymore. To God be the glory. It's your boy, the Cabo, the Cabo one.